With Shaken folks, back with another reaction, back with some more Flock of Seagulls. And we're back with their 1983 sophomore album, Listen. And this seems to be a very appropriately timed reaction. Uh, I actually just did a riff. I'm doing like TV and movie riffs. And I just did a riff of an episode uh, called Fat Tuesday. And then when I went to see what I was going to react to from A Flock of Seagulls next, I noticed that the term is Rosen Montauk. And I was like, why do I know that? It's, I've heard that somewhere. Well, I looked it up online. Apparently, it's another sort of cultural variant or another linguistic variant uh, to mean Fat Tuesday or indeed Mardi Gras, which you may know is coming up right quick. So it seems like all of this is just very well timed. It wasn't really something that I was thinking about in advance. Whereas, by contrast, when uh, we got to Halloween last year, there were like three or four tunes that I'm aware of named Halloween. It was like, well, I'm going to do all of them. Uh, but this just happened sort of naturally. Nevertheless, um, I've mentioned as we've gone through this second album, I really notice the sound that I sort of heard on uh, the self-titled album, but a bit more emotional, a bit sort of more, I don't want to say complex necessarily, because I think that might sound like an insult to the first album, which I absolutely love, but it just has a bit more depth to it, I guess. Um, yeah, it just feels like a sort of an extension of the first album, but it's kind of going beyond, at least in like the atmosphere and the sort of emotional content of a couple of the songs. So I'm enjoying the journey uh, through the second album. Um, and indeed, I think it was Han Solo was mentioning that, you know, this is a really cool group and it's a shame that they didn't stay together longer. Um, so, you know, I'm still going through the catalog, um, but knowing that they don't have, you know, a catalog of like 15 or 16 albums, like some groups that um, I'm familiar with and going through, um, it is a shame. So, in any case, uh, given the title, I would expect it to relate on some level to the holiday, maybe to the Lent, or um, I think it's called like Choresma in some um, linguistic cultures, but basically the season, I think, what is the, it's like a feast day, and then obviously it like leads up to Easter, so... Um, perhaps it'll be relevant in terms of like the story or the narrative of the track will take place during that time. Maybe it'll be about some of the themes or like motifs that are associated with that series of holidays and time period. Either way, I have a purring Luca on my lap, so let's get started. This is A Flock of Seagulls. The tune is Rosen Montauk, and it's from their 1983 album, Listen. <laughs>
the normal tunes was like captured by the board or something. Imagining the face of like label executives when they heard this and they're like Maybe I just don't get it. Oh, I like that metallic. That's very techno. Indeed, like I know they're like a proper instrument sort of band. Uh, with sin, like a synth rock kind of band. But part of this track, it feels like early house or something. It's very, you know, just steady Eddie with the kick, like. I feel like I'm being processed through a machine.
I love experimental music, but this is surely like, let's see how far we can go and what we can get away with in terms of just like making the most like non-commercial tune possible. It's hilarious. We're not we're not even done, probably. I have no idea. Are we done? We're done. Holy shit. Uh, yeah, again, it's obviously not a tune that, like, if you want people, you know, young and old, like, who like all different kinds of music, if you want, like, big tent music, that's not going to be a tune that you would play. Um, but again, I do enjoy abstract, experimental, and frankly, like, bizarre music. Um, indeed, I listen to hardcore, I listen to all sorts of, you know, weird electronic music. Um, but that really is out there, and it's hilarious that I talked for a couple minutes up front about the sort of, like, emotional kind of, like the depth of the the um, songs on the album so far. Now, t to be fair, there was depth in that track. Um, but yeah, it was obviously very different from what I was discussing the album had been doing so far, um, which again, I enjoy. I enjoy a sort of like, um, you know, sort of atmosphere-breaking tune and sort of like a dramatic shift in a different direction. Um, but yeah, it is very experimental. It is very... Um, again, on the edge of like what people might listen to, like how accessible um, a tune might be. And it is interesting to include that on the main album. Um, I could totally see that being like a B-side, um, but the fact that that was actually on their sophomore album is amusing to me. It's like a bold choice. And again, I'm surprised like, you know, label executives um, who sometimes have very like, oh, we have to use this for a single and this isn't good enough or whatever. Um, the idea that they heard that, and they were like, yeah, we'll put it in there. Um, I am very amused by it. So, in any case, let me know what you think of this crazy tune. Uh, Luca, I know I you hate this, but I do have to pick you up. So, yeah, let me know what you think, and we'll see you next time. Peace.